All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Simply Finance with Shane White. I am pumped today to have Dan Norcross on the podcast, another buddy of mine from my old days at Purdue. And um, welcome to the show, Dan. Absolutely, Shane. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I was pumped. To, we, we've you know obviously been connecting here and there since we both graduated. And it's fun to finally, you know, I haven't seen you in forever. So virtually seeing you is cool. This is good to catch up. Absolutely. No, I know what you mean. We kind of go back and forth every few months or, or quarters or here and there and, and stay in touch. I know a couple of years ago, I traded you a pair of snow goggles for a six month supply of yep. RX bars. Yep, basically. Which, uh, <laughs> yeah, which, which I don't think lasted me more than 90 days. That's usually how it works. Through, that was pretty good. Once you have that, yeah, once you have that many, you don't you don't treat them like they're uh, they're a specialty item. You just start crushing them. That's true. You take them for granted. Pretty soon yeah. it was yeah you know RX bar for breakfast, and then I'll have one for lunch, and then maybe one for <laughs> a snack at two in the afternoon, and they're so good. It's hard. Imagine to- working there in the office, and you can just grab them whenever you want. That was a problem for me. I mean, obviously we've been home for a little while, but when I was in the office, uh, yeah, I needed to like slow my consumption down of our products for sure. <laughs> It was like, it's hard have, to know. yeah, they're good. They're good. I mean, they taste good. That's the whole point. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can mix it up with all the different stuff we've got. Well, before we go too deep, do you want to give everyone a little download, just kind of your background, you know, obviously you can hit on, hit on whatever you want, but uh, just give everyone a little download and uh, a little bit about you. Sure thing. So my name is Dan Norcross. I'm 29 years old, born and raised just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I currently reside in Encinitas, California. It's a little up and coming beach town about 30 minutes north of downtown San Diego. I've been living in Southern California for five years. Like you mentioned, Shane, we both graduated from the Craner School of Management at Purdue University together in the spring of 2014. And I play in the professional paintball league with a team called the Los Angeles Ironmen. And then I also work in the corporate world in retail merchandise. Nice, perfect. Yeah. Um, at first thing I just thought of, we, I think we talked about this a little bit on the phone, but I said, uh, quite the, quite the change of pace growing up in Minneapolis to living in a small beach town. How did, uh, was that something you always wanted to do? A little bit. Yeah. I'm actually at home in Minneapolis right now. It's uh, it's 40 degrees here. So that's certainly a Slight bit of difference. a change. Yeah. You know, but I, I was fortunate through playing paintball, really, I spent a lot of time in San Diego when I was in high school and a little bit while we were at Purdue. And the reason being is that San Diego to paintball is the equivalent of Aspen to downhill skiing or Texas to high school football or Florida to spring training baseball. It's very much the Mecca and the epicenter of if you really want to do that, San Diego is the place to be. So I spent some time out there and I always hated leaving. You know, I've been fortunate to travel pretty extensively in the U S at least. And I'm usually okay with coming back home, but every time I would leave San Diego, I'd be like, man, I don't really want to leave. This place (laughs) is rad. I love it. And, uh, and after I graduated, I had an opportunity to move out there and pulled the trigger on new year's day, 2015, actually I left Minnesota 6 a.m. Yeah, I drove out with my dad in my Jeep. And if it didn't fit in the Jeep, I didn't bring it. Oh, wow. Which is pretty, yeah, it's pretty liberating. And, uh, and found Craigslist roommates the day I got there and, uh, oh, and I've made it happen. So, yeah, nice. in five years. So, you, yeah, so you went out there for a job first, but was it kind of like, was the goal kind of like go out for the job plus you're closer to the mecca of paintball and it all kind of would tie together? Was that kind of the plan? Exactly. I was really fortunate that I could tie the two together in that the company who gave me a job, Die Precision, is the equivalent of the Nike or Apple in the paintball world. And they're pretty diversified. They ran a snow goggle apparel and protective gear business for a little while. They also dabbled in ski skate snow protective gear. And then of all things, they actually run a CNC machining business where they make a lot of parts for defense contractors, Boeing, North of Grumman. Yeah, if you, if you, you know, we could get super into the weeds, but the machine that you mill a paintball gun on is pretty similar to what you could make a aircraft wing or a helicopter oh, rotor on. Yeah, really? it's, it's pretty well, comparable. That's wild. Yeah, they, so they, they figured out uh, there's a little bit more money in making parts for Boeing than paintball guns. 
Got uh, it. So they, they dabbled in that as well. So very diversified. And I interned in there while we were at Purdue, actually the summer of 2013. And then afterwards, they extended me a job offer to come out and do sales. And I took it. That was 2015. Nice. Nice. There you go. So you, and at this point, give me a little background too. I would love to know like your paintball timeline. I was trying to think through, I was looking at your Instagram, trying to figure it out a little bit. And I was like, the further yeah. I went, I'm like, shit, these are like, I, he has got the old school filter that we all used to use and he's still playing paintball. I'm like, he's been doing this for a long ass time. So when did you start playing Man. paintball? Was it in Minnesota, I'm assuming? It was. So where I grew up, where I am now, actually, there used to be, they're both closed now, but there was two paintball fields, one indoor and one outdoor within two miles of me. So oh, cool. it was, it was really accessible and I needed the indoor because you know, there's snow on the ground six months out of sure. the year here, if not seven. Right. So it was super accessible. That definitely helped me get into it. But how it really started is I was in sixth or seventh grade. Like most teenage boys, I thought paintball was cool. And uh, the place where we bought our paintballs and, and got our, our compressed air tanks filled, that's what powers the, the paintball gun and shoots the paintball. They had a league. And oh. we went there a couple of times, like keep buying our supplies and you know, we were paying, we were playing in like our, our, our backyard of, of my buddies. And the guy who owned it was like, Hey, I have Wait, a lease. You guys are there on, all your time. So your buddy's got a house where you can play paintball in the backyard and not hit the house. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is the Midwest, man. People nice. have, right. yep. yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not, uh, not Southern California. Uh, yeah. So plenty of people out here have acreage. I, I mean, I live 40 minutes out of the city, so most people up here have a little bit of space. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That, that's a good reality check for everybody in a city right now. Yeah, right, right. We're all jammed in for the most part. Yeah, so this guy who owned the store where we bought all our supplies was like, hey, we have a league. You guys are in here all the time. You should play in the league. And we were like, yeah, we're good. You know, we'll come in a league. We can do this. <laughs> and we got demolished. We just got the brakes beat off us, but it was so fun. And we started to get a little bit better and most fields will have a factory team basically like the best guys who play at the fields will form a team and they'll get sponsored by the field and they'll be the factory team and i looked up to those guys i was like that's who i want to be so okay i kept playing got on the factory team for that field played and how a little you, bit more like can you explain? I'm just so curious about this. This is, it, yeah. I think this is super interesting. And actually, before we go any further, I have to admit, I've never played paintball, which is crazy. I've which always wanted to. I've always wanted to and just never had the chance. So I got to do that at some point. You got to point me in the right direction. Yeah, we can go, man. Yeah, we'll definitely need uh, to do that. Well, except you'll kick my yeah. ass. So as long as I'm on your team, I'm down. <laughs> oh, for sure. We'll, we'll play together. Yeah, I actually play in Chicago all the time. There's great fields there. Okay. Um, so you, yeah, okay. I mean, and then I, how do you I, get on a team? You're, so you're playing like, what are they called? Is it called a match or like a, like yeah. what, what, I guess, yeah. Like when you're like trying to get on the team, what's that process like? Very entrepreneurial. There's not exactly a sign up sheet like yeah, there is okay. for most youth sports, which is probably inhibited the sports growth. But like most things, man, the key is just showing up, right? right. You, know, you just be the guy who's there all the time and play well. And then eventually you start playing better than some of the guys on the team. And the powers to be are like, well, maybe this guy's better than who we have right now. Maybe we should take him. Yeah, got it. Okay, that makes sense. So you get on yeah. the team, and then is that, what, what happens then? From there, I, I sort of just transcended through the levels. So it's, it's almost like college sports where there's like a division three, two, one, and then professional. Um, and from there, I graduated to the, the best team in Minnesota, which was a division three team, uh, got cut from it uh, a year or two later. And then the local pro at the time, his name was Aaron Tholey and he actually owns a field now and he's like my pseudo big brother. He said, hey, if you wanna come play with me in, in Chicago and, and play regionally and step up a level, you can. Uh, so I followed him, nice. made another team. And then my sophomore year of high school, I played in division two, which is a, a pretty competitive space. And, uh, and I think I took like fourth in the first tournament we played oh, wow. in. And then after, after that, so at, I was at this like, point, are you like, good. yeah, are you, um, yeah. So you're like traveling in high school. Like, are you doing like weekends? You're going to tournaments and stuff. Yeah. That, that first tournament was in, is in South Carolina. Oh, wow. um, yeah. oh so you're like yeah, doing like so major was, traveling in high school. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. And it, at this point, is there is there any not to skip too far ahead, but is there like is there is there money and sponsorships at this point? Or are you like is it all out of pocket because you're in high school? Like how do you do this? At that point, it was supported by a lot of parents on the team, and then we had a little bit of support from I actually the company ended up going to work for. Oh, cool. But yeah. um, yeah, a, a little bit. So they, you know, most of the guys in the team were around my age. I think it was like 16, 17. So yeah, there was, there was a little bit of support, but uh, you know, fortunately I had great parents who were super behind what I wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. So you're okay. So, so wow, that's, I guess I didn't realize that. I just assumed mm -hmm. high school, you're playing in, in Minnesota, you know, around Minneapolis. I didn't realize you were traveling nationally as a sophomore in high school. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I did that. And then my senior year of high school, actually, I went pro. So that's when I kind of, you know, made the jump. And then I started traveling a lot. And, uh, and then I started playing in, you know, Las Vegas, Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, as much as I could, I would, uh, I would play. And that actually, that actually led me to Purdue. I was oh, okay. in, I, I was in Chicago playing with a few guys who were Boilermakers at the time and we got rained out. So they're like, Hey, it's going to rain all weekend we're at school at Purdue. If you want to come back and you know hang out on campus for a weekend, nice. you should come. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And I was, uh, I was a senior, so it was good timing. Right. Okay. Got it. That just sucked mm -hmm. you in. Okay. Got yeah, it. Totally. So when, when you say pro, like, what is that? What does that mean as like a senior in high school? Like what are your options for someone listening to this who is getting into paintball? Yeah. Like, what are your, like, is it an option to make enough money right away to, to not go to college and play or like, how does that all work? Uh, I, I wish. I mean, some people fully commit to that. There are true professional paintball players out there. And, you know, I, get, I give them a ton of credit, but most of those guys make the bulk of their living off teaching clinics, off endorsements, sponsorships, you know, marketing promotions on things like Instagram and Facebook. Um, but for me, you know, pro at the time just meant that all my travel and expenses and gear was paid for, which at Love it. 17, 18, I was stoked. Yeah. I was like, this is, this is great. I get to go yeah. around for free and, um, and do what I like to do. Oh yeah, for sure. No, that's badass. Okay. So then you went to Purdue and then we had a club, you were on the, like the club team, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. So, you know, like I mentioned, I, I went pro in high school and at the end of my freshman year, you know, I was, I was traveling a lot still and I was away from campus and it kind of felt like I was missing out a little bit. You know, I knew paintball was always going to be there. And Purdue, man, your time's limited, yeah. right? You got, you know, four or five years at best, uh, unless you want to pay the piper and keep going. Yeah. But uh, so I made the decision actually to leave the, the pro league at the end of 2011 and just play in the collegiate league oh, okay. and focus yeah. on that. Yeah, it's just so I could be closer. And, you know, all the guys lived on campus and the field was close. And, you know, I, I didn't have to, uh, I didn't have to bounce every Friday and come back late on Sunday night. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cause in what team were you, were you like on a team like you are now when you went pro in senior year high school? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, you typically go pro, um, with the team. Okay. Well, and what team was that? It was called Indianapolis mutiny. Oh yeah. I was like, I'm from, well, I'm from Indy. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Like that's originally yeah. front. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Got it. Oh, very cool. So you were, Oh, that's wild. So you were, that was my next question too. Cause so you were living in, in your home in, in Minnesota yeah. But you're on a team based out of Indy. So how does that work? Like I was thinking about even today, like you're on, we, we'll get to it, but the team you're on where you live, like how does practice work? And like, how does, I mean, I'm just curious about how all that, how all that flows. Yeah. You know, at the time I, I drove to Chicago a lot. It was, you know, a solid eight, nine hours. Okay. And Chicago is a pretty big epicenter for the sport. And uh, yeah, I would drive down the guys from Indy would drive up to Chicago and I would drive down and uh and we'd get a you know hotel for the weekend and, and play oh really okay so you guys would not yeah. necessarily you would have to go to indy the team would meet in chicago because you had people from all over the place most of the guys were from indy or chicago yeah. um so it was really chicago or fort wayne where we okay. played the most makes sense okay yeah. got it wow and then so what was it like from going pro and then kind of back to the collegiate level because that seems like you're kind of feel like you're probably taking a step backwards a little bit right because i'm sure it's not quite as competitive i'm sure as being pro yeah i mean i definitely had a good time out there a little bit right I, you know the sure. tempo slowed a, a little yeah, bit yeah. so that made it uh yeah that made it more enjoyable but so i i think you know for people listening and probably have no clue what people are you know sounding like hieroglyphics to them 
the, the games played five on five on a flat soccer like field or lacrosse, you know, like medium grass or turf. It's 150 feet long and 120 feet wide. So think like half oh. a football field. Yeah. Right? Okay. It's not that big. Yeah. And then they have obstacles set up that are inflatable. It's called bunkers. And you play a, a five on five game. And the goal is to eliminate the other five players by hitting them with a paintball. And then you hit a buzzer at the oh. end and you get one, you get one point for that. And uh, you get as many points as you can in 12 minutes with a two minute break in between each point. So you might play like 10 points oh. in a match. Wow. That's a lot. That's is that, it works. goes that fast. Yeah. I'd say a point is anywhere between 45 seconds to two minutes. So oh, pretty quick. Damn. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. I've seen some videos that you've yeah. posted, but I didn't realize it was happening that fast. Yeah. It, it, it seems tends like to go uh, pretty quick. The videos I've seen, it almost seems like, like some people are getting hit immediately. Yeah. Is that yeah, like, is that really, I mean, is that really how it works? Cause people are like, I saw when you guys start, you like all run and like dive and like you have all the place you're headed. Totally. Yeah. I mean, so the, if the field's 150 feet long and uh, the, the, the paintball guys, they have to shoot under 300 feet per second. I mean, that ball can go end to end in half a second. Right. That's so crazy. it doesn't yeah. take that long. And what does that feel like in hit at that speed? It feels like getting snapped by a wet towel. Oh, okay. I could equate it to. Okay. Yeah, like it's okay. you know, like you ever like get like your brother's oh, yeah. a towel in the kitchen. You yeah, it it definitely feels like that. Um, so yeah, but back, back to your original question though, the, the college thing was cool because you had guys coming in and girls actually who were like, I've never played paintball before, but oh, yeah. we had we, we had a you know we we had a call out and um you know we just say like, hey, if you are interested in this, you can come out and and we'll teach you. Sure. So I got the opportunity to work with a lot of people who were like, Hey, I've never done this before, but I want to do it. And, um, and I felt like I got to build a team, right. Cause you take people who never looked at the sport before and right. um, you kind of get them, the, get them in the bug. Sure. Oh yeah. 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 That's exciting. So you kind of yeah. got to be a, like a teacher per se. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we played against other big name colleges, UConn, Texas A&M, uh, UCF always has a good team. Uh, Temple used to give us a run for the money. Clemson was good. Um, West Point, we used to beat the brakes off those guys all the time. That's surprising. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I get, that's the other question I ask all the time. I was like, going to ask you. How, how are like the Army or the Marine guys? Um, I play with Marines all the time now, so I, I can't okay. talk too much trash on them. <laughs> um, but I, I, it, it, honestly, dude, it's totally different. Like, it's got, yeah like those guys, like the, the risk reward is so different, right? Like I'll roll the dice and I'll, I'll run and I'll do some things. Cause if I get shot, you know, I lose a game, you know, yeah. um, they, you know, the repercussions, you know, in their line of work are a little bit different if they, uh, right, they, take, right. a, they take a hit and yeah. then for them. Actually, I could see that being harder because how do you, it's like hard probably to separate like your training, training, training to be in the military. And then you're like doing paintball where it's not to your point. It's like, like the things that you're normally firing in your head to like not do things probably you like it. Yeah. It's like, it's like trying to play baseball and, and golf at the same time. Like yeah. Whenever I it's, played it's that, like totally your swings different. would get screwed up. Exactly. Oh, that's wild. So, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It, it was, it was so much fun, man. Like we, um, we got a little bit of funding from Purdue actually. It w it was inconsistent. So I, I okay. actually, I was pretty adamant. I, I never wanted to be club president. I just wanted to play. Uh, thankfully we had a, a guy who was happy to work with, uh, I think it was called SOGA, the student organizations and, uh, grants oh, yeah. association. So we would, you know, we would apply for money every semester and sometimes they would pay for the whole bill. Other times they'd pay for part of it, but they always supported us in one form or another. Oh, that's cool. Cause I'm sure I'm, I mean, I can only imagine is, is pain expensive, like the actual ball yeah. you're buying. Yeah, and that, like how many of those yeah. are you going through every time you go out and play? Uh, I mean, each person like minimum two thousand probably. Two thousand balls, probably. Uh, yeah. Really? You go through that many? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, each time I would say so. Yeah. Well, because you're fine. I mean, I've seen like I've seen, I've held one before. I know I know there's like the double yeah. trigger, triple tr trigger. So you I mean you can fire a ton at a time, right? I obviously know nothing yeah, about paintball besides how cool it is. Okay. I'm asking you lots of dumb questions, but I think it's interesting for people. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask. <laughs> there we go. Exactly.
Yeah, they, they actually they cap the rate of fire. So they, you know, they, the, the ball can't fly faster than 300 feet per second. So to, to put that in perspective, um, you know, like a like a handgun or a rifle, uh, I'm not that educated, but I know that they shoot around a thousand yeah. feet per second. Okay. So it's like it's like a third of the speed. So one, you can see them coming because they're not coming that fast. Um, that's like equivalent of 200 miles an hour, and they cap the rate of fire, how many balls per second, at uh, at 10. 10 per second. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, the reason they do that is, like, right around, like, you know, 10 years ago, like, right around, like, 2008 to 2010, paintball's only been around since the late 80s, so the sport's relatively really new. Oh, okay. And the, the technology was, was getting advanced enough to where these guns were shooting, like, 25 30 paintballs a second and okay. it, it just it was making it not fun because you, oh. you, you don't you don't miss anything because you can just spray that, yeah it was it was honestly it was kind of ruining the game so they um it's like restrictor plate racing in nascar right, right. They're like it's not good for you guys to go this fast we're gonna you know we're gonna dial it back and and make the game more enjoyable which which sure. is good you know because if somebody plays for the first time like it's a horrible customer experience if they go out and get shot 30 times you know they're never coming back yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, got so, it. Yeah, I slowed them down, but that's um, yeah, that you know, like the paint consumption thing. So, like my current gun, I got about a year ago. So, and I think the other day I looked, they have like one hundred and eighty thousand shots on it, and that's with <sighs> all of our season being canceled. That's just yeah. you know, me that's playing for fun. Wild. Yeah. So when you say and you say ten a second, like, are you? How are you doing that that fast? Your fingers are moving that fast. So you've hit it ten times. Yeah, another, another good question. So they they regulated that. They use um, uh, a system that basically, if you if you pull it three times a second, it sustains ten balls per second. Oh, um, because before they capped it, uh, people were were cheating. You know, you had uh, probably some some smart Purdue engineers that could design software to go in the guns. They're all electronic. Um, and they were programming them to cheat a little bit. So Got now they it. just, yeah, flat 10 balls per second. That's as fast as you can go. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. That way it's, again, it's not, you know, kind of getting out of control, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was, that was a ton of fun. You know, I, I love playing with Purdue. We, we were like this close to winning a national championship my senior year. Okay. And, uh, and if I could have anything back, I, I would have won like one more year with that team. I think we would have, we would have taken one home. Um, yeah. And that would have been cool. Cause the, the school actually won a national championship in 2009, the year before I think oh, really? I got there. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's a tradition there to, uh, to carry on and it's uh it's a bummer that we couldn't repeat, but it, it was so much fun. You know, like we got to go play in Florida together. We got to go play in Louisville a lot. Um, a lot of the alumni and parents of alumni would support us and show up and barbecue and, you know, loan us their vehicles to drive. And, and it was so cool. That's so fun. And how often, yeah. like, what was the season like? What's the season of paintball look like at the collegiate level? It pretty closely followed the, the calendar school year. It was very much um, like October or September through May. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So it's a pretty long season and it's a, it's a lot of your yeah. time, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, it was less. And that was like the nice part about playing with Purdue is, you know, I could go practice on a Saturday morning and, um, and still, you know, be back to campus in the afternoon. And yeah, you know, like, as you know, like Purdue was, Purdue was really fun. Right. So it was, it was hard to leave on the weekends, uh, you know, take your pick of fun activity you could get into on a Friday right. and Saturday in West Lafayette. I know we got, I got an RIP, uh, the cactus. Did you see the cactus closed down? Oh, I know unreal. for anyone that knows anything about Purdue, it's like, a Hard to, hard to describe. It's a, it's like a Thursday night tradition. Everyone strolls down this hill and goes to this wild, enormous bar with crazy loud music, a dance floor in the middle. The cactus cups are like, I wish I had one. I should have brought one. I have them down here. I, I should have brought one yeah. on the show. Um, oh, man. Fun times. Good times. But that's sad. That place is closing down. Um, it is. You know, it was, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun there, man. I um, Yeah, I, I got to make it back. I'm going to go back again in uh, in two weeks. And Oh, are you? I went, yeah, yeah, I went back last year and that was the first time in, in four or five years. And, you know, like so much has changed. The place is always under construction. They never stop making right. it better. 
Right. Oh yeah, you're right. hundred percent. I know I haven't been back since yeah. my sister graduated in 2016. Yeah. But I heard it's crazy. I've heard the last couple of years, it's like a totally different, it looks totally different, which is wild. You know, I, uh, I was listening to your podcast with Adam the other day. And when you guys were talking about CS 235, yeah, <laughs> I, I remember that class. And you know, f- funny enough, that was the only class that Purdue I ever just walked out of. You, oh really? Yeah. You know, cause it was in those computer labs and I think we were doing Microsoft Excel VBA codes, you know, the, the macros you can embed in yeah. sheets, um, which I use all the time now, ironically, but I kept falling behind and I was asking my neighbor and I could tell that they were getting annoyed and it, it just, just wasn't happening that yeah. day. And I was, I was frustrated and I was like, you know what? Not today. This, this, is, this, is, yeah, this is going down like this today. I think I was in the front of the lab and I didn't say a word to anybody. I just shut down my computer, packed my books and, and walked out and, you know, came back tomorrow. Yeah. Isn't that funny how in college, yeah. like, I mean, you can pretty much do that in any class if you want to and just no one, no one would say anything. I mean, you can kind of just, it's really up to you to go. It's really funny for people who, you know, either didn't go to college or haven't been to college. It's, it is kind of funny. You can, um, I remember that in that class, God, I just remember being so frustrated. I remember feeling like, I mean, like, I don't feel like I'm learning anything that I'm going to use except, I mean, like, yeah, to your point, some of the Excel stuff was good. Um, Oh, it's so funny thinking back to classes and the struggle. It's also funny thinking back to like what life challenges were back then in college versus now and how you get stressed out for a test or like, I don't know. It's just so funny. It's all perspective, but. Oh, a hundred percent you know. different, man. Um, I loved it though. You know, like going to Purdue was, was the best decision I ever could have made. So when I was in high school, actually, I was pretty dead set on going to the university of Minnesota. Okay. Which makes and sense. Yeah, local Twin Cities, and, and I mean the campus is right downtown. It's it's beautiful, and I didn't get in originally. I had I had terrible grades in high school, which you know I don't I don't I must have just been asleep the whole time because I'm sure it wasn't that hard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't get in right away, and I was I was devastated. And I actually took my rejection letter, and I followed the address on it to the admissions office. And the very next day, I went down there and knocked on the door and was like we got to talk about this, you know, really? Let's, let's figure. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, you know, full shirt, coat, tie. Um, you know, I, I forget their name, but I was like, Hey, I, I need to talk to this person who signed my letter said I can't get in. Um, and they kind of just wrote me off, man. They, they were like, Hey, you know, a lot of people didn't get in and you know, your grades weren't that great. And you know, this and that. And in the meantime, Purdue was like, how can we help you? What questions do you have? Have you looked at a meal plan yet? Do you know where you're going to live? You know, that the attitude was very much from Purdue. Like, we're lucky to have you. And I actually ended up getting into the University of Minnesota and, and got my uh, this, you know, decision reversed. But their attitude oh, wow. was... I didn't even know that yeah, was possible. Yeah, you know, persistence, man. Exactly. If you, if, you knock, if you knock on the door enough times, somebody will answer. I saw you post that. I love that. That's a good one. Yeah. So... Yeah, they, they ended up letting me in. And, um, you know, that, at that point, I was just kind of over it. They were very much like, hey, you're, you know, you're lucky to be here. And like I said, Purdue was like, we're lucky to have you. Right. And Purdue just made it so easy to say yes. I'm sure I would have had a great time at the U of M. It's an amazing school. But, um, yeah, going to Purdue is probably the best single decision I ever made. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I loved going to Purdue. The people you I met. I think the organizations I was involved in set me up for success in a lot of ways. Met my wife, obviously that was the biggest thing. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I I would never replace the four years at Purdue for anything. It's just like a, it was like a springboard and, uh, you know, the rest of life, It's just such a good place. A lot of good people. Um, yeah, I gotta go back. I'm, I'm bummed. There's no football this fall. I was really hoping to go back for a tailgate and do the whole thing. I know. I know it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it is sad, but you know, it's probably the right thing to do. Yeah. So it, it'll be, it'll be back. Yeah. I did you watch football last? I was, it was weird watching the chiefs Texans game last night. I don't know if you watched it, but I mean, there was a mm-hmm. lot more fans in the stadium than I would have expected. And sure. they would zoom in on people and people like either didn't have masks on or had them like down around their thing. I'm like, Ooh, you need like one big game like that where a few people come in and then all of a sudden it's, it, you know, it could be a hot, I don't know. That's what worries me is like, I don't know how we, I don't know how we do that properly. Like, I mean, I know they're social distancing kind of, and they're wearing masks, but I don't know. 
it seems like uh it seems like a tough little like a, it just seems like a tough situation i don't know we'll see i mean we'll it see is. after a couple of games what happens but we're we're gonna see um we're, we're gonna see um it's you know it's funny you bring up that if you knock on the door enough times uh somebody will answer thing i i remember i i posted that and this is a good story actually so i was pretty hell bent on getting an opportunity with red bull out of purdue yeah that's right i think it's what i saw it on maybe i was scrolling through your instagram i think it's what i saw it on yeah yeah and i i, I forget exactly how i got a hold of him but i got in contact with an hr manager there and i ended up setting up a meeting at their headquarters in santa monica so i and i, I think i was actually out there for a paintball tournament and i ended up staying a couple extra days to go to the um go to the headquarters at um, you know, Red Bull HQ, which is an amazing building. If you can imagine what that okay, looks like. Yeah, I'm a, sure. A, a office playground. And they set me up an interview for their graduate program. And this is, this was really cool. So they uh, kind of cherry picked like 12 kids. There was, you know, like a, a standard application process and a video interview, but then the, the real hot tamale was they flew these 12 kids, myself included to LA to do an in-person interview and they had some heavy hitters in there. I mean, I like going around the room, it was like Duke, Stanford, Harvard, Northwestern, Dartmouth. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, yeah there, there were some, some, some sharp people in there. Yeah. It, like almost intimidating. And it's a three day thing. And they, uh, they take you out to dinner at this mansion in LA before and all the hiring managers are all wearing masks. Whoa. Yeah, so you, you can't see their face and they ask you all these questions to throw you off base. Like you'll be talking to one of them and I remember one of them said, go give a drink to that person and explain why they're thirsty. And then, you know, the next person would, would say like, explain to me why you picked out the shoes you're wearing. And it just, they really oh, try and get in your head. Yeah, and they don't tell you what the, the final interview is gonna be until I think it was 24 hours before they asked, they asked me at least that year, the prompt was, if you were going to build a company to dethrone Red Bull in the energy drink market, how, how would you do it? And what would you do? Whoa. And yeah, you had to come up with a presentation and present it in front of everybody you're competing against for the same job the next day and also be questioned by them. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Intense, man. But so cool. By far one of the, the most amazing processes I've ever been the part of it or I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I did it and uh, I got the job actually. Oh, did you really? Was, yeah. Yeah. I, I did it, um, which was cool. It, it was just, it was kind of tough. They, they wanted me to move to Washington, DC. And I really thought about it, man. It was, it was a long, hard decision, but I had my heart set on Southern California and that was something I wanted to try. Um, so I actually ended up turning it down. Oh, interesting. But I mean, Hey, there yeah. you go. It's a good example of, you know, you wanted something, you, you got it, but it doesn't have to necessarily be a decision you go with. Yeah. You could have been exactly. married to it. Right. Yeah. And just done what they asked. Exactly. So, uh, I didn't. And then, you know, that kind of led me to move to San Diego and, um, and work for die for a couple of years doing, sales for them within paintball and within their, their snowboard line. And, and they all. Oh, you there? Yeah. Oh, there good. we go. Where did, we had a little pause there. Sorry, everybody. Oh, we're good. You're good. It paused. Um, I was going to say, we, we really talked about getting a MBA, right. And like yeah. the value and the ROI of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that was like, you know, really on my mind when I graduated from Purdue, you know, really the same day you did. If you would have asked me if I was going to go back, I would have said a hundred percent to get I'm an MBA going to go back. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. I would have shook your hand and, and bet you every bottom dollar in my bank account. Um, and then, you know, after, after a few years of doing the die thing, this was, um, you know, two years ago, so 26, 27, I was like, Hey, if you know, this is something you want to do, this would be a good time to pull the trigger. So what I told myself was, well, you haven't worked with anybody who has an, an MBA, you know, like you knew him. I had some MBA mentors at Purdue, but 
there's a huge opportunity cost with going back. It's two years. It's a good chunk of money. You should go work with um with people who have it. And then yeah. that led That's me. That's a good idea. I honestly, I had never yeah. thought about that. Like go work with people who spent the money and now hopefully have a higher paying job. And is it, was it worth it? Yeah. So I, I did it, you know, and I uh, actually used a Purdue connection to get a job in, in merchandising at Petco in San Diego. And uh, I've been there for two years. Got it. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. And you, the one, I know the one thing I was going to ask you was um, I'm assuming yeah, with where you're at in paintball too, were you looking to just stay in San Diego and, and, and find a company there that you could you know, have to move? Yeah. So I, that's uh that's kind of the, the tough story, right? Is it's definitely two uh, parallel, but non intersecting universes uh, at that point between, you know, trying to play paintball and, and, uh, and build a career simultaneously. So 2015, I moved to San Diego. Um, that first year playing paintball, actually, I was playing for a team in Northern California. So I was okay. driving to San Jose a lot. From San Diego? Own, yeah, it's like Jeez. seven, eight hours, man. That is a haul. And hike. Yeah, so but I guess I will, in, yeah. into pause too, you, because I think we kind of, we skipped around a little bit, but I, I wanted to get back to your your, your storyline. So you uh, went to Purdue, obviously, then you got out and started working. And right when you got out and started working at Dye, did you get back into professional paintball? Or what was, how did like, you know, trying to like, tie these next to each other yeah that's good that's, that's why you're the moderator and, and i'm the guest right you're, <laughs> you're better at this than i am um yeah so you know coming from playing collegiately i i wanted to get back into it but okay. it was harder like for one i grew a lot in college i was under six feet in high school and you know i was i'm six four now and oh yeah wow i was gonna say were you really yeah yeah so being a, a tall bigger guy that made it harder and the game had changed it had gotten more faster it uh it had gotten a little bit more agile the fields were smaller everything was just quicker so i had a learning curve in front of me so in in 2015 i'm, I'm back in san diego and you know in the mecca and i decided i want to start playing again so i start playing for a team in san jose because die sponsored them and i was working there so okay. it's very easy to to make that connection sure and um dude, I, just, I got burnt out you know i was driving to san jose all the time I even took a Greyhound bus by myself. Ooh, um, I've done that yeah, once. Over, yeah, oh, man. It is, <laughs> Not you got to be committed. You yeah. got to be committed. Uh, yeah, so I took, you know, I was taking buses up there if I don't want to drive by myself. And, um, like, you know, those guys, I, I love them, but they were kind of there more for the party. Okay. And we were, we were not playing well. So at, at the end of 2015, I had a terrible season. And I actually, I, I thought I was kind of done after that you know it's like oh, this yeah. isn't working out i'm spending a ton of money i'm not relearning the game in my new body in the new format Th this might be it and so i remember in in january of 2016 i went out and i played and it was it was kind of cold that day cold for san diego it was like 50 out and raining and and paintball just it does not work very well in the rain that the paintballs are made of gelatin oh. and water-based vegetable dyes so like they swell and they break in your gun and your socks get wet. It's just, it's not a very enjoyable experience. Yeah. Um, so I went out there and, uh, and I just had a terrible day, man. Like all my gear broke. I got shot to bits and I was like, you know, this is, this is a sign here. I'm done. You stick a fork in me. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Um, and I remember that night, actually, I was back at, uh, at the condo and I was sitting on the couch watching sports center, feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> um, it's not a good place to be. And the, uh, the owner, of Indianapolis Mutiny, Tommy O'Donnell, who had you know been the first team pro team I played for, right. he called me out of the blue and said, "We're putting the team back together. We're going to base it out of LA now. Oh. I've got a group of guys. I know you're in San Diego, and I want you to come out." And initially, I actually turned him down. I was like, "You know, man, I in my current state of mind and you know the season I had last year, I, I don't think I'm your guy." And he he talked me into to driving to LA the next day. So I, I get up, drive to Los Angeles the next day, and he already said that he kind of had a group of group of guys to to rebuild the team on. And I roll up, and you know, uh, this is mostly audio, but I like to think of myself as a pretty clean cut Midwestern white guy. You know, mind my p's and q's. You okay. Know, like, yeah. You should have you should have no problem bringing me home to mom and dad. I, I like to think of myself as that type of character. Um, and this group of dudes that that he had picked up to play were were some pretty uh, rough around the edges 
Mexican guys from Ventura County, um, East LA. Uh, oh, the, you know, know. Yeah, they had, a little more they diverse. Maybe some, some, yeah, maybe they had seen some some different life experiences than than you or I. Got um, it. Put it out, and they they looked at me and they're like, they're like, you, you're you're the guy. He sent you, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm here. And uh, <laughs> man, they, they didn't even let me gear up next to him. Actually, they're like you can oh, gear really? up over there. Like, yeah, they're like you can park over there, man. You're you're totally. Oh wow, um, this is like a there was like a this is like a clan. Yeah, man, they, they were they were not not fans uh, no. initially, and I could like I could hear him like talking shit about me when I was in the parking lot. <laughs> um, but I dude, I played lights out that day. Oh, nice! And uh, earned their respect right away, and um, and then we we kind of went on a run. So that that group we had a pretty good season in 2016, 2017. We we moved up to play to play semi professional. So I'm kind of like rebuilding back up the ladder again oh the team had to start like lower and work their way up yeah got it yeah we had to start in so because it's not that's the one thing that's been interesting as i'm talking to you today too so it's it's all a team it's not really there's no individual components to it right no it's all all team based so most teams are like eight 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 to ten guys got it okay okay so the team's working their way up you're part of the crew part of the crew everybody's asking me from the outside they're like how do you fit in with all these guys like yeah you know, we look at them and I, they nicknamed us the criminals because all those guys, they, uh, you know, they just had a, a very uh, astute look okay. about them. And then they're like, then you got Dan in the middle, but I loved it. dude. That's I, so I funny. And, uh, and then in, in 2018, we came out and we got a new coach. We got some extra funding that enabled us to practice better, play better teams. And um, we had a, a banner year, dude. Like we came out, and so there's there's five major tournaments a year. It's almost like tennis or golf. Okay. We have majors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played all five majors. We won two of them, oh, and our wow. lowest finish was fourth. Oh damn! You guys were and, lights out. Yeah, we were super consistent. And the the big one that we won, we won the World Cup, the you know the World Championship at the end of the year. I got a ring. Oh wow! Um, man, and it was it was so much fun and you know we were we were we had enough funding that we could split our practice time between southern california and tampa in florida so oh, two shitty the be- places the best teams are- <laughs> yeah exactly so the, the best teams are kind of on the coast so you know we were playing the best competition consistently it was it was a really good time man so i would like you know i would leave work and then if we play in in california that was easy but i would fly to tampa on you know friday afternoon play saturday sunday fly back Sunday night and, um, and do that for a few weeks. And then we would go to the tournament and, um, Oh, wow. And at this point is this like at this level, now that you're doing this, like again, trying to get prof- in the professional realm. Yeah. Is it like, is there sponsors again? And like, are you paying for this out of pocket? Like it just seems so expensive. It was, it was crazy expensive. No, no, that year, fortunately we had secured some, some funding. So it's, um, it, uh, like 98 percent of it was covered i had to come a nice. little out of pocket I, I still wasn't getting paid at that point yeah. that was uh that was 2018 um but you know i think what i took from that year and we you know we were really successful is when you're consistently successful it's lightning in a bottle man like you have to have so many things that come together at the same time that lightning in a bottle is just the best way i could describe it and when okay. you have it it's it's really hard to let it go. So, you know, like I was so committed and, and so in love with that group. I remember at the end of that year, I, I started working at Petco and you know, like when you just take a job, they're not as flexible on your time off. Yeah. So uh, die being, you know, the super supportive people that they've always been, they would let me leave, you know, at like 10 AM on Fridays and go catch a flight and go to Florida if I needed to. And yeah. Um, so at Petco uh, a few times, actually, I would leave work at 5:30, and then I think I'd catch like a like a 10:45 flight out of San Diego. Oh wow! La- land in Tampa at at like you know 5:30 or six in the morning because of the time change. Oh shit! And then, red eye. Exactly, and then I would grab a Starbucks and then go straight to the field and play all day Saturday for oh, eight hours. Oh jeez! So you just like sleep on the plane, hopefully. Yeah, I, honestly, I would prepare myself like Wednesday, Thursday, I would try to sleep like 12 hours, just okay. like eat really clean sleep and, um, and take great care of myself because I knew that Friday, Saturday, I was going to drain the tank. Yeah. 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 Whoa. 
So, and, and then let me ask too. So like at this point, when you're like doing all this, I mean, that's gotta be exhausting. It's tough on your social life. You're in a new, you're in California. What is like for someone who's interested in paintball, like, and we're about to get to it, but like, what is like the, the highest end? Like what's the end goal? Like, is it, is it going fully pro and like continuing to compete at the highest level? Does that like generate money and it's wor- worthwhile? Or is it all, is it like more so just like a passion of yours, no matter what? Like, I'm so, I'm so curious of that. Mm-hmm. It sounds like at this point you're like basically almost you've won the world, you've won like the world championship. So that's like, it sounds like the, about the highest point you could possibly get in paintball. Well, I won the, the semi-pro world semi-pro championship. Semi-pro world so cup. It's like, Got it. It's like, uh, you know, being Alabama, right? You're the, you're the college champs, but you're yes. still, it's not the NFL. Got it. Um, Got it. Which we'll, we'll get to that. I, I won one of those too. Okay. Um, you know, I think it's different for everybody, man. The um, There's a quote I think of quite a bit. You know, I must said something to the extent of you're paid in relation to the problems that you solve. Okay. Love that. That's another good one. Yeah. You're on fire today with the quotes. I like, yeah, I like that one. So if you think of like, you know, Patrick Mahomes, the you know, highest paid player in the NFL right now, quarterback for the Chiefs, I think he just signed a, a 10 year deal for $450 million. Yeah. Something, so, something like that. Good for him. Yeah. Right. Those guys are paid that much money because they solve an entertainment problem that a lot of people value, right? And they generate right. a lot of money with their services and they're, they're paid a, a proportion to the money that they generate because they solve an entertainment problem. Yes. Paintball is really hard to watch. We don't solve an entertainment problem a tenth as well as okay. the NFL does. So there's, there's a little bit of money in it. I would say the guys who do it you know, truly professionally, it's, it's their only gig. I, I give them a ton of credit because they're, um, you know, they're super courageous, but they make a lot of their money on teaching clinics Got or it. they work for a manufacturer like I did, or they do endorsements for, you know, certain products if they have enough Instagram followers. I mean, sure. there's a few guys in, you know, in, in pro paintball with, you know, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 K Instagram followers. So at, at that point, I would imagine that you can, you can make a little bit of money off yeah, that. So it's, right. it, it's different for everybody, man. Totally makes sense. Yeah. It totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay, cool. So then you're at this point, yeah. Semi pro. And then you want to talk about how you end up like, I would, so is this the same team that you're now on or then is there a time where you left the team and you're on this new team? Yeah, you're, no, you're, you're exactly right. So that, um, that 2018 season, that was, you know, a dream come true and, uh, you know, winning a ring. That was with Indianapolis Mutiny, actually the first team I went pro with. Got so it, yep. I met those guys were all my friends, you know, to like know a lot of the core of that team from high school in 2010 and then to win in 2018, you know, dream come true, right? Like, oh yeah, I'm sure. The, you know, the, the Budweiser shower at the end and, you know, it's just the whole thing. It's I'll awesome. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Um, and then in the off season that year, uh, you know, a few things changed for me. You know, I, uh, I started working at, Petco, so the work life changed. Um, my grandparents passed away, which you know was hard. Oh, you know, sorry. it ha- happens yeah. to everybody. Um, but we were we were really close. You know, they were very much like the glue that held my family together. And um, I just started thinking long term, like, hey, you know, what? How long do you want to do this? You know, it's, it's really fun right now, but what's next? Where's this going to go? And in January, the Los Angeles Ironmen, who are like the equivalent of the Yankees or the Lakers or the, uh, the bulls in the game. That's the longest standing pro team in history. They've been around for 35 years, gave me a call and said, Hey, we want you to come out. We think that we could use you. So this, and, is, this um, is a theme. This is like, so twice you've like thought about hanging it up and you've gotten a call basically from, so yeah, that's pretty I wild. So. I know it, it keeps dragging me back, man. That's, that's a good sign, right? That's something yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It is. Something. Um, yeah. They, they, so they gave me a call and um, that's actually like the, the banner, the marquee team that die sponsors. Okay. And, you know, so I had just left working there, um, you know, like four or five months earlier. So I was like, well, you know, how does die feel about it? Because they finance the majority of the team and, you know, how are they going to take it? Obviously I just left working there and, um, they were totally behind it, which is really cool. You know, that 
it says That's so awesome. much about those guys because you know from the time I was 16, 17, they they sponsored me with gear. They gave me a job when I was 23 to 27, and then even after I left working there, they uh, they signed on to sponsor me as an athlete and you know pay all my expenses and provide me with with equipment and you know like from start to finish they've always wanted the best thing for Dan Norcross yeah which is amazing you know not a lot of companies will do that for the people that they support yeah oh for sure no that sounds amazing I mean that's so cool that it's kind of like full circle too right I mean you kind of left for hopefully bigger brighter opportunities and then you kind of circle back and you get a chance to go so now you're like this is the highest stage right this is like the top pro or no yeah. Yeah. This is the lead, man. Welcome to the show. Um, and it was, I mean, it was a real, it is a real professional organization. I mean, we're all compensated to play at this point. I have a athlete contract with social media requirements. You know, I have to wear wow. certain things. I term, yeah, it's, it's how it should be, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. sure any NBA or NFL major league soccer contract, NHL, they're, they're all like that. Oh, and sure, that yeah. is, you know, our sport should have more contracts. A lot of, if you know if there's maybe 200 guys in the league total in the pro league the majority of them probably don't have contracts i would say maybe 60 70 of them do and to be one of those you know i'm i'm really grateful that i'm in a a world class organization that's funded and and supported by a company that legitimizes it that's so badass yeah i mean at that and at that point too did it was that like a that's got to be a i don't know was there something that went off in your head that you made it to that level? And like, at this point, like, I mean, it's gotta be, it's it's, like, I know you have a really good job and and we don't have to go deep into that, but like, I'm curious on like, now that you've made it to this level, do you, do you foresee potentially like you taking a bigger like business role in paintball going forward? Cause I mean, now you're on the stage, now you're playing in it. You're, you've been successful. Just curious where your head's at with all of that. It seems like that's if once you make it there, that's got to open a lot of eyes for a lot of people in the paintball world. Potentially, yeah. You know, I I did the playing and working in it thing for quite a while, so I I knew what that was about. It's tough, right, to do anything 360 days a year. You know, pretty much because if you're working in it Monday through Friday and then you're playing on the weekend and then you know you got a few holidays off, it, right. it, it is tough. Um, sure. there's plenty of people who do it, but it, it burned me out a little bit. You know, there, there'd be weeks when, you know, I had a, a long work week and then it's like, man, I, I don't want to go talk about paintball on Saturday morning. I want to, yeah. I want to go to the beach. I want to do something normal. Um, but had to go. So I like just being a player at yeah. that point. And I, okay. I, I kind of like the, the separation of, of church and state a little bit. Um, and then really cool, Petco rolled out uh, open paid time off oh, uh, cool. later that year. Yeah, which, you know, fit like a glove yeah. on my paintball schedule. Um, and I mean, they're, they're super supportive as well. I, you know, I, I imagine RX is like that too. But the, the way of the modern workforce, I think it's kind of just like as long as you get your work done and right. you get back to people and you're a good communicator, you can certainly balance you know, your professional and your, your passion as well. Yeah. Love that. I mean, that's so cool. And what, what's it been like, I guess, what was like the first time you played on the pro level? What was that like? I'm sure that was it, was it a bigger stage? Is it a bigger audience? Like what, what felt so different? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I think I try to not get too hyped for the moment. Everybody, everybody's different, right? Like some guys before games will, you know, have their headphones in and, want to be by themselves and almost going to like a meditative state. Sure. I know that I play the best when I'm just there in the moment and I'm not too serious. I understand what I'm doing and I understand that I need to give it my all, but I try not to get too caught up. Like I never want to look at the crowd. I don't want to talk to anybody that's not on the team. Um, but when I'm in, you know, our little circle of, you know, 10 guys and, and you know, our coach and our staff, I want to joke with those guys and I want to laugh and I want to be relaxed because I know that's how I'm going to play my best. So I, I tried to just take it like another day at the field. Yeah. That was my attitude. Got it. Got it. No, that makes sense. And I'm sure, are you loving it? Has it been fun? Because you've yeah. you been on there one full season now? Is this your second season? 
Yeah, so 2019 was my first year with the Ironmen, and, and um, there's 20 teams in the league. We play uh, 10th, so middle of the road, um, not bad at all, but um, it was nonetheless a ton of fun. We had some really good players on the team at the time um, who I got to learn from. We had a ton of experience. And then we actually lost some of those guys in the off season. Oh, they okay. got traded. They got traded and went to a different team. And then, oh, so there's like March, trades and everything, just like any other pro. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. when you're when your contract when your contract expires, right? You are you're up for a trade. Um. So it's it tough to to lose some of those guys, but we rebuilt a little bit in the off season, and then in March we had our our first major event, and uh, and we actually came out and we won. Oh, nice. Amazing. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that was cool. Yeah, it was, man. So the, you know, like I said, the Ironman are the longest franchise in the game. They've been around for 30, it was 36 years actually. And uh, they hadn't won in 11 years. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Being the group that brought the team back to first place. Yeah. Felt pretty oh, yeah. good. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm sure. And so what's the season look like now with COVID and everything this year? Has it changed a lot? Yeah, I mean everything's changed, right? So out of those those five major events, two, three, and four have gotten canceled. We won number one, so I'll take that. Yeah, there you go. And number five is here in November, tentatively. Um, but I I doubt that that we will attend. You know, just kind of talking uh, amongst our team. You know, we have some guys who have young kids. Um, you know, I'm around my parents all the time who are both over sixty, and you know my. My thing with the virus is I don't want to live in fear of it, but I certainly want to respect it. It is, it is a real thing. Yeah. If you put yourself in positions to be compromised, you could be compromised. And, uh, right. you know, a, a, a social gathering of a few thousand people in Florida of all places yeah. is probably not the most wise thing to put myself in. Yeah. No, it makes sense, man. Makes sense. I mean, paintball will be there when we can get this under control. So it'll be there. That's exciting, man. That's so cool. I'm pumped for you. I mean, I, I've been obviously fought. We've been friends for a while and I, uh, I've, I've followed your story through Instagram and I've always seen just the steps, but it's been really cool to like break yeah. it down and, and learn a lot more. It's paintball is one of those things where I think everyone that knows anything about it or watches it thinks it's cool as shit, but I bet most people don't know like the details behind the competitive side of it. I don't think it's talked about super widely unless you're in the paintball no. circle, I'm sure. Right. And that, and that's, that's our fault, right? That's our, you know, that's our marketing department that, um, that needs to do a, a better job, you know, and there's, you know, major sponsors have, have tiptoed into paintball. Like Anheuser-Busch has been there for a while. Um, Monster Energy has been there. Um, the Marines have yeah. been there, you know, doing, doing recruiting and, and sponsoring things. Um, it's just, it, it never sticks that okay. well, you know, and, and, um, we can well, do a seems, whole other podcast. Well, it just on, seems but. funny because I, I think what would clicked in my head during this episode is um, when I talked to Matt Frazier, we talked about CrossFit and how CrossFit started off just very similar. Like he, there was not a lot of money in it. There wasn't a lot of funding to the athletes. And then like brands that were within CrossFit, like the people that sold the shoes and the people that sh- sold the gear and then the plates and the bar, like then they started getting in. But then now like the, the, they've done such a good job of marketing that like, you know, beer companies are coming in and, and mm-hmm. I just, you think, I would think paintball could be the same way where like, it's cool as shit. Anyone can do it. Like anyone can go out and play paintball, which I think is a huge advantage because then it, like you can watch it and then be like, Oh shit, I want to go play. And then you can go play. Um, so I wonder, yeah, it just seems like maybe things like this where we can get more people to learn about it and, and hear about it. It'll help. Is there like, when you guys compete, is it on TV? I'm hoping and I'm assuming, or is it online or how do you, how can people watch it? On a webcast, they yeah. they do a pretty good production job with the webcast, and um, I, it's it's super cool that you're into CrossFit. I, I watch your videos at the garage gym all the time, and oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> I, I I wish I had that in my uh, my two bedroom apartment. Um, it's been like the best, but, um, luckiest investment I think we've ever made uh, is is putting that together. Like I never, oh, nice. we had it, we have had it for almost two years now. We bought, I put it together right when we bought the house uh, two years ago, and I, it was funny because people didn't like laugh at me, but people like especially who I work with because like. Most people I work with live in the city and they go to like really nice gyms downtown Chicago and I'm out here in my like dirty garage, but I just like love it. I just feel like it's grittier and I, I don't know, it's just nice to have in like, it's like I walk out my back door and it's, there's my garage. So it's been, it's been funny though when COVID hit, it's just like, it was like a whole like flip of the switch where now it's like, 
everyone wants to have the stuff at their house because you don't want to go like share weights with people at a gym or do any of that, you know? So that's funny side story, but 200 pounds is 200 pounds, bro. It doesn't yeah, matter right. if it's downtown <laughs> Chicago garage, you know, that's in a right. park in, in San Diego, the, uh, the iron never lies. That's, that's right. That's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite things about it. I think that's, that's a, a quote. I, I can't take that, um, take credit for that, but yeah, 200 pounds is always 200 pounds. That is um, so funny. I, you know, true. I, th- I think, you know, CrossFit's done a really good job and I've done CrossFit a number of times of building a community within itself, right? And, and CrossFit right. built itself up to be attractive yeah. to outside investors. CrossFit didn't really need the help when those companies came in. Those companies, I think, certainly added value and added exposure to the sport. But, you know, I think the attitude in, in paintball is like, you know, we really need a, a Procter & Gamble or, or a Nike to come save us. Right. And, you know, you and I know from the Purdue days, it's like, that's, that's not how it works, man. Like yeah. those companies, they'll come in when you don't think you need them exactly. because then you're doing good enough on your own. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a good way to think about it. It's so true. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's like, so I actually, I need to like, I would love next time it make, I'll have to like pay attention because hopefully you guys can do it again. I would love to watch on the webcast and see what it's like. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that's what, I mean, that's to me, what's made CrossFit. So it's like growing and growing is like same kind of thing. Like you can, watch someone do it and then you can go take the exact same workout they did and go in your garage and do the same workout obviously probably not as hot heavy weight or as fast but like there's something there where it's like you can take like i always i love the nfl but like at the end of the day like i can't go out and play tackle football with my buddies i, mean, I guess you could mm-hmm. but like that that's like the only thing that's i, I sometimes think like with how much they're paid and then you can't re- like repeat it where I think something like paintball or CrossFit, I think it's kind of interesting and cool that you can like do what the other, what the professionals are doing. I think it's interesting. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. It's more accessible. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's exciting, that's, man. Um, I hope you guys can get that, back to competing. I'm sure that's kind of a bummer just, you know, being on the stage and feeling like it's on pause right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, but I, I've managed to, to stay busy. You know, I, I still play pretty much every weekend. Um, and about about a year ago, actually, I um, I started going to a gym in, in San Diego called Activate. And they train a lot of NFL and MLB guys in the off season. Sweet, yeah. And, yeah, it's, and it's, it's been a really cool environment to uh, to immerse myself in. And um, so I'll, I'll still train there okay. two days a week. It's and, open and, and everything, just masks or social distancing uh, or something? Appointment only. Oh, okay, yeah. Only. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got a, I've got a book, um, book of time, but yeah, so that keeps me busy, keeps me in shape. Um, I was, I was thinking, you know, like, so I worked at the, the Corec at Purdue. Yeah, and right. I feel like I, I used to see you there all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's and, right. That is where we cross paths a lot besides oh, man. You know, class and stuff too. Yeah. I, I loved, uh, I loved working there. It was, it was a great job, but, uh, I, I was thinking the other day, you know, I remember when I was in college and I would train, you know, you're doing like bench press and bicep curls, you know, you want to look good at the beach. Yeah, right. Yeah. And now uh, I'm doing, you know, hip mobility and, you know, <laughs> back, back exercises. And I'm like, I just don't want to get hurt. Uh, it's, it's funny how it's, uh, how it's changed. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel like with you life, it's different changes the priority, right? Or what the goal is. Yeah. For someone like you, I'm sure the goal is to be in, in a good, in a good physical, you know, shape for a game and make it to your point protecting yourself from getting injured because that's the last thing you need it's so yeah, funny yeah very different it, it, exactly I, I was i was reminiscing on that on uh, on our days uh, at purdue and, and senior around the correct so yeah th- things have changed nonetheless right they have they have it's all it's all fun stuff though yeah that's so cool well, thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate you coming on. I thought this was great. I mean, is there anything else? I think the one thing I wanted to make sure you added was, you know, I guess someone like me who I'm obviously older, I'm not necessarily someone who can get into competitive paintball today, but like if someone is younger and listening, do you have any advice or, or tips on, you know, working their way up and, and trying to do the whole paintball thing the way you have? I would say just go play for fun. You know, don't, don't try to, to do it to go pro necessarily i i'm playing pro because i loved it when i was 12 and i've found a way to keep doing it at 29 and and that's why it works for me and whatever it is you know if you're into shooting pool or horseback riding or quidditch 
just do it because you love it and you love the process. Like Adam said, you love practicing and you love being out there. And, um, and then I think through that, you'll naturally find ways to keep doing it. Got it. Love that. That's great advice. And then do you, how long, I mean, hopefully it's for a long time, but, uh, have you thought through like, what's, what's the timeline look like for you and like how long you think you'll compete competitively or are you just kind of taking it year by year and, and continuing the grind? You know, I'll stop when I no longer want to give it a hundred percent. I never want to be a guy who shows up and gives 90% effort. So Love it. Yeah, the day, sense. the day I feel like I'm i I'm going to show up and half ass it. That's the day that I'm out, but hasn't happened yet. So Love it. Yeah. They, right. They still got to deal with me. <laughs> stuck with you for a while. No, that's awesome. And then the last question I have, I ask everybody on here is, um, you know, you're a super smart guy and you're into all this too, but if you had to suggest one book, podcast, source of knowledge to the audience, what would it be? Man, I, I knew you were going to ask me this because I listened to your, your podcast and you're, you're truly in, in my rotation. So, Oh, thank you. I I'll, appreciate I'll, that. I'll That's an honor. Yeah. Yeah. No. So uh, I'll, I'll break it down. If, if you were going to do a, do a podcast, I would say simply finance with Shane White, obviously. Um, obviously. Or listen, or, or how I built this with Guy Raz. That's an incredible podcast and, and certainly one of my favorites. Uh, if you are a reader, read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. I, I think he does a great job of explaining success. And, you know, basically he points to the fact that success is opportunity meeting preparation. Yeah. So have you read that one? So no, it's really funny. Actually, you said that I'm going to literally buy it when I get off here. Cause you're, the, so you've suggested this, Matt Frazier suggested that one. That's what he actually put down. And then I've had really? people like yesterday, someone posted a thing on Instagram of like, they heard it on, there's three people now that have said that on the podcast and people are buying it and like reposting it saying like, I heard, heard this on your podcast from so-and-so. So, but I have not, I, but I mean, obviously it just keeps getting brought up. So I'm going to buy it right after this. Yeah. You, you got to do that one. And um, if you're, if you're not a reader or not a podcaster and you just want to watch Netflix, go watch the last dance about yes. the 90s. Oh old. yeah. Oh, good one. That's and a good idea. Michael no Jordan. one said that yet on here. Oh man, go watch it twice and just listen to Michael talk and his attitude on competitiveness and being a teammate and his relentless drive to win. So if, if, if Netflix it. is your thing at the bare minimum, go watch that. Yeah, everyone can do that. Everyone can at least go on Netflix and watch something productive. Yeah. Yeah, The Last Dance was sick. That was, I, oh I got pumped every week for that to come out. Um, so good. It's so cool to see. I, I remember being a little kid and being a fan of the Bulls, being from Indiana. It was funny living in Indiana because it was like, I was a Bulls fan, but then Reggie was big. So mm -hmm. it was like the whole thing. And, but to see like video of behind the scenes of how competitive he really was and just how focused he was, it's just crazy. It's, it's like one of those, you know, once in a lifetime type of people you get to, you get to like learn from. With, without a doubt, you know, when I, the big takeaway I took from that and, you know, I've, I've been around in, in my sport, at least some really competitive and successful and elite players. They're all pretty selfish to the you know to some extent and they're they're very critical and, and demanding and, and disciplined right. and like sometimes they're not nice and you know sometimes those guys are dicks right to their teammates and when jordan got criticism for that i felt that was people who are non-athletes or haven't played elite level sports just not understanding that's how it is like sometimes guys are assholes sometimes yeah. guys you know de demand more of you than you think you can give but they're doing it just to make you better and that's how it is. So I have no doubt that Jordan was probably not the nicest guy to have on your team. Sure. Oh better. yeah. Right. Right. But he yeah. was successful and what he did. And he was, I, I've, I feel like what I took from that and I've been taking away, from, I've actually been picking up on this in a lot of things is, and I've tried to do it a lot in 2020 on a couple of things, this podcast being one of them is if you want to be successful in something like, instead of trying to do a million different things, be like laser, laser focused on a couple, a couple really important things and just triple down on it and see what it does. Uh, I feel like that's what he did. He just like kind of like blurred a lot of things out. It was just like, it was just all in on basketball and, it, and really winning. It was like more than just basketball. It was like win at all costs type of thing. The jack of all trades is the master of none. That's right. That's right. It's true. Yeah. It really is true. Yeah. 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 You got to pick. 
No, well, I love that. Great, man. Yeah. Thank really you, Dan. Appreciate really appreciate it, man. It was great catching up too, man. We'll have to uh, do this again and hopefully we, maybe we can do one when uh, you guys, you know, when that day comes where you guys go back to one of the major competitions, we could do them before and, and get it out to everybody to get people watching. I would love that. Yeah, let's do it. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Good deal. I appreciate it, Shane. You take care. All right, you too, buddy. See ya. See ya.